This is Abe Freetanzer from Awards Watch, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Sally Potter about her short film, Look at Me. How are you, Sally? I'm good. Thank you very much. Can you tell me about the genesis of this film and where the idea came from? Gosh, where ideas really come from, I never know. They seem to arrive um, and then they take you over, as this one did, this story. Uh, it began actually as a story within a story, within a different story. But um, I soon realized it was a, a story in its in its own right, um, with a beginning, a middle and end, and some surprises. And um, that's, that's how it started. And then once I'd cast both Javier and Chris Rock and Sabian Glover, the amazing tap dancer, of course, um, the story began to uh, take its embodied shape. Well, I think that's definitely an unusual pairing, Javier Bardem and Chris Rock. I know you've worked with Javier before, and that this is an unusual sort of dramatic pivot for Chris. Yes, absolutely. And I think there's something incredibly exciting about casting against type or against expectations, but bringing out another quality. And Chris Rock is, of course, known as the most amazing genius stand-up comedian. But what people don't know, perhaps, about him quite as well is that he has the capacity of being a really serious actor and with an incredible delicacy about him and subtlety um, um, and... Uh, Javier to put Javier's qualities to next to Chris's qualities and sort of seeing what happened in the space between them was a very very thrilling thing to do for a director um, and I think we we all enjoyed that in a way that kind of co collision of of types of being and types of performing which in the end the the differences kind of iron out because they identify with the people they're playing and with the story itself and that begins to uh, determine a, a way of being together. And I do think it's a different kind of role for Javier also, because we often see him as somebody who has power, at least can, you know, intimidate people with his size and just the, the way he looks. And in this case, that's that's not what we see. No, we see somebody, first of all, who's a drummer, a skillful drummer, but who is also a frustrated drummer and uh, somebody who who we gradually find out feels he is failing and has a, a backstory of addiction and so on. But I think what's really important often in in short films, especially perhaps in all films and all stories, is how they end. And it's what we discover at the end, the, the qualities within both of them and the way that they relate to each other that I think then tells us with hindsight everything we need to know about what we've seen before and reinterpret it in the light of how it ends. And I know many successful short films end up getting made into feature films. Do you feel like you've told this story and you're satisfied or there's a possibility there could be more? Well, it's a very interesting question because I don't really think that short films are a kind of short version of a long film, nor are they necessarily a prelude to another film. They are a form in their own right. And more and more people are watching short forms of all kinds, whether that's music videos or things on TikTok or YouTube things, people are moving quite sort of swiftly from one story to the next and have become very speedy uh, understanding what is the story. Um, I love the long form too, you know, I've made feature films all my life and I, I think I, I love it as a form, but it was absolutely fascinating to work with the short form again, not having done that for a long time and see how demanding it is and how in a way compressed it is and how you can go through a small frame or a small entrance or something small in time and have a big experience and not even feel rushed while doing it. If you can somehow be, become very elastic with time, even in, in a short space of time. So that's a long way of saying, I don't know <laughs> about what it might become, but I know that it is what it is and it feels quite complete to me in its own way. And I know that the film is going to be released by Bleecker Street on their app. Can you share that process and what that means? Well, it means that's exciting because it means it's going to reach plenty of people and um, people are going to be able to find it in, in different ways. And I think um, people are actually, I think I have a feeling there's a kind of renaissance of the short form uh, of short films. Not just, again, not just because they're a shorter version of a long thing, nor because they're a practice session for doing, in quotes, the real thing. You know, they are real. They are a thing, shorts. And they, when done well, they can be, they can be really, really exciting. So I'm thrilled that it's going to be able to reach uh, the audience for whom it was intended, which is as many people as possible. <laughs>
Absolutely. Well, I wish you plenty of luck with the film. Thank you for taking a few minutes to speak with me today. Thank you very much indeed.